In this video, we will see how to create an executable .exe file from a batch script having file extension as .bat. iExpress is a component of Windows 2000 and later versions of the operating system used to create self-extracting packages from a set of files. So, it is a built-in component or tool of Windows. So, we do not need any third-party application to create an executable file from a batch script. We will use the iExpress. Let us see how to do it. For demonstration, we have started an application or a process by the name someprocess.exe. Here we have a batch script. Let's check its contents. It contains a task kill command to terminate this someprocess.exe application, which is currently running. The pause command will not let the command prompt window close automatically once the script execution is completed. So it's a simple batch script meant to terminate some process.exe application. Let's run our batch script. It terminated the some process.exe application. We can also see success messages in the command prompt. Now let us create an executable or .exe file from this batch script. Let's check its properties. We can see it is a batch file with a .bat extension. To create a .exe executable from a .bat file, we will use the iExpress component of Windows. In the search bar, type iExpress. Please make sure to run iExpress as an administrator. This is important. The iExpress wizard will open. Here we get two options to choose from. Since we are creating an executable from our script for the first time, we will select the option to create a new self-extraction directive file. Then, click Next. The purpose of our package is to just extract the files and run the application. We have nothing to install. So we will select the first option. Then, click Next. Here, we can provide any suitable title to our package. We will give it as, terminate some process. Then, click Next. Here we can select an option to give a confirmation prompt for the user to confirm if the user wants to install the package or not. If we want the prompt to be shown to the user then, we need to select, prompt user with, option. And here we need to type the message that the prompt will show to the user. Since for our demonstration, we are the package creator, as well as the package user, we do not want any prompt. So we will select the No Prompt option. Then, click Next. Here we can choose if we want to show any license agreement to the user or not. If we want to show user a license agreement then, choose the option Display a license. Then, browse and select the text file which contains the license agreement. We do not want any license agreement to be shown for our demo, so, we will select the option, Do not display a license. Then, click Next. Here we need to add all the source files that we need in our package. We just have this one batch script file to add to our package, so let's add it. Click on Add. We will select our batch script file. Click Open. Please make sure that the source file path and file name should not contain spaces. Otherwise, it might throw an error during package creation. Click Next. Here we need to select the program file that we want to launch from the package. From Install Program drop-down box, we have selected our batch script file. We will provide a custom command. Before the file name, we will type cmd space forward slash c space then the file name which is already there let me repeat the complete command it is cmd space forward slash c space the file name since we do not want any other command to run after the installation is completed we will keep post install command as none click next here we need to select how the installation program window will be displayed to the user. Since our program will just execute to terminate the process, we don't have anything to display. So we will select the hidden option. 
you may select the option as per your requirement. Click Next. After the installation, if the user has to be shown any message then, select Display Message and type the message. Otherwise, select the No Message option. We will go with the No Message. Then, click Next. Here we need to select the location where we want to place our .exe file. Make sure that the path has no spaces in between. We will save it on the desktop itself. Provide a suitable file name for the executable. Then, click Save. Below are a few options to select from. The first option will hide the file extraction progress animation. We don't need it for our tiny application, so, we will enable it. The second option will allow storing files inside the package with long file names. Please enable this checkbox if you are not using Windows 95. Since we are on Windows 10, we will enable it. This pop-up is mentioning the same thing. If we are using Windows 95 then, leave the long file name checkbox unchecked, otherwise enable the checkbox. We have enabled it. Click Yes here. Now click Next. Here we need to choose if we require the system to restart or not, after the installation of our package. Since our demo program will just extract files and run, we do not need any restart. So, we will select the No Restart option. Then, click Next. Here it is asking us if we want to save the self-extraction directive file or not. This file has the extension .sed. It contains all the options and configurations that we have chosen while creating the executable package. It's up to us to save it or not. We will go with saving the .sed file. This is the file we require if we want to recreate the package with modification in the old configuration or to just recreate the package with the old configuration. If we remember the very first page in the wizard, we selected create new SED option because we were creating for the first time. But if had created a package before and we have its SED file then, with this option we can recreate the package again along with the option to modify old configurations. That is why saving the SED file is preferable. We can see that the path is already selected. We can browse and change the save location if we want to. We will leave the path as it is. Then, click Next. Finally, all the wizards are over. Now click Next to create the package. Our executable package is created quickly. We can see, done, at the end of the status. Here, this is the .sed file created. Let's open it and check its contents. We can see that it contains all the configurations that we have set while creation of the package. So this was the .sed file. Note that once the package is created, we do not need the .sed file to run the executable. We only need it if we want to recreate the package. This is our executable package. Let me finish this first. Let's check if our executable is working or not. Let me run the sumproccess.exe application again. It is now running. Just like the batch script, running the executable package should terminate the sumproccess.exe application. Let us run the executable. Well, it successfully terminated the sumproccess.exe application. Sometimes one needs administrator privileges to run commands in the script. In that case, run the executable as an administrator. We can say that we successfully created an executable from a batch file. Or, we can say that we converted a batch script into an executable. If you like the information then, please like, share, and subscribe to my channel. Thank you for your time and patience. Have a nice day.